Hey guys, what's up? It's Baldazzi out with an Escape from Tarkov video. This is the first supplemental video for a series I'm about to start called Tarkov 1 through 10. Each video in this series is going to be a walkthrough of an individual dealer task designed to get you from level 1 to 10 in the quickest, most efficient way possible. Once you hit level 10, you'll unlock the flea market, which really opens up Tarkov to allow you to play the game the way you want to play it. This video is going to be a walkthrough of the customs map, which is very heavily played during the first 10 levels, so it's good to get your bearings. And this video is going to help you with the call out so you can run where I'm running as I'm running there to get these missions completed. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up for me. If you're looking forward to this series, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell so you get notifications when the videos go up and get live. I do stream Escape from Tarkov two to three times a week on Trovo and my link will be down below. With all that boring stuff out of the way, let's learn a little bit about Tarkov. And we're in. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do in this video is go over all of the extracts, deployments, as well as callouts for this map, which is customs, which we're going to be visiting quite a bit into this uh, in this series. And we're also going to go over some of the scav spawns because there are quite a few missions within the first 10 levels that do require that you kill several scavs. And this one of the maps you're going to be doing it on. So... Let's get underway. This spawn right here, things you have to know. Sniper scav spawns on this rock. There's a sniper scav that spawns on this building right here. And this building right here is called Military Checkpoint. If you ever get a key that says Military Checkpoint Key, it goes into that building right here. So that's just what people use it as a call out. All right, continuing on, there is a Peacekeeper mission that requires you to mark UN trucks. This is one of them. Moving on. There are three of these buildings right here, separated by some open space. In the middle one, there is a player spawn. So if you spawn where we're at, watch this hole in the fence, because there's a good chance somebody's going to be running that way. This is where that spawn's at. This building here is called ZB11. That is one of your extracts. Now we won't be able to use that extract because we spawn on this side of the map. But if you spawn on the other side of the map over by Big Red, which we will get to in this video, this will be one of your extracts. It's one that's always open, so you can always come to this one. That being said, it is one that is very heavily camped. So whenever you come to this area to try to extract, always look in these bushes. It's very easy for people to sit in bushes, especially this one here, and you won't see them, but they can aim right down here, right down that road where we came down, and see you and be able to shoot you before you get down in there, which makes it very easy for them to come and loot your body. This building doesn't really have much of a call out because it's not a very heavily contested spot. Same thing with this building, there's not much of a call out to it, but something to keep in mind, there is a player spawn in here. So as again, if you spawn or respawn, um, or if you spawn in here, always pay attention to this area because there's a good chance somebody's going to be running out of here or out the other side. Another thing to note, there are two weapons crates in this uh, room. There's one on this side over here, and then there's one uh, right up on top of that, which I don't know if we'll be able to see an angle on it here. Yep, right there. Uh, where are we at? All right. Moving on. You see the blue building here? That means you are right next to Streamer Room. This building is called Streamer Streamer Room Building. I'll show you why here in just a second. Because if you come up here, you got your green screen, your cameras, and your computers. So obviously that makes sense. That's why it's called Streamer Room. Now, continuing on. This train car here is the location of an object for a task. I can't remember the name of the task right now. I want to say that is a skier task. Um, so if you have to find information for a specific uh, person, 
you'll find that information in this train car. But we'll visit that throughout these first 10 levels through this video series. If you come up here and you jump over this fence, you can either jump over it like this or run all the way around that concrete fence and back through. This place right here is another extract. This is called ZB12. If you come up here and the light is on, that means this extract is open. If the light is off, that means you cannot use this extract, even if it's one of your choices. You will see on here, just like you do with the ones with the question marks, that means they may or may not be open. That light's on, so that means that one is open. Obviously, we spawn on this side of the map, so we can't use that. This building here also doesn't have much of a, a call out, but just bear in mind there's a uh, player spawn in here as well as um, an objective target for a task, which is to mark this van. I don't believe we'll be hitting that within the first 10 levels, but just something to keep in mind beyond that. And moving on to this building right here. I call this warehouse by elbow. Now there's two elbows on customs. If you're on this side of the map and somebody calls elbow, they mean this area here, which is between these two warehouses and around that. So we call that this the warehouse by elbow. Okay. Now this is warehouse four. There is a player spawn right in between the building and the wall right here. And there is also an extract by Warehouse 4, which I do believe that extract is if you're playing a scab on this map. Uh, you just have to get to the front here. Now this little shack here is a place we'll be going for um, a task in this series. You have to get a gold pocket watch from a semi over on the other side of the map and bring it here open that up and drop it off right there that's the only time you need that key is for that now this building technically it's part of warehouse four as you can see it's all one big building but typically we call this back part warehouse four and this part right here is called power and the reason we call it power is because you can come here and flip the power on now before we do that if you look up top here, ZB013, notice how it's written just like the other ones. If you come here and turn power on, that turns green. ZB013 is open on either side of the map. It is located in the next section of the map that we're going to. Um, but it is available for either, either spawn but you cannot use it until that power gets turned on. And you'll be able to tell if the power gets turned on because that will turn green up there by ZB013, the XFIL01. And that will turn green if anybody turns it on. It doesn't have to be you. So you can spawn on the other side of the map and somebody can rush straight here and hit the power and that will turn green and you'll know that they've been here. If we go under here, now you can either get to the next section by going under or you can go up over. That is the train car that I said the mission part would be in. That's the fence we jumped over if you want to keep your bearings straight. And if you come on down here, you can either jump or go down the way we did that last time and run through here. This is old gas station. This is also an extract. Now, if this, if this extract was open, there would be uh, green smoke coming up. There would be two spots with green smoke coming up. Um... This is also a very good place to go for tasks where you have to kill a bunch of scavs because scavs spawn here, I think, three different times throughout a raid. And it's a uh, spawn for player scavs as well. So if we continue on through here. Oh, I, I should mention this area back here is called the backyard. If anybody says they're in the backyard, they mean this area behind old gas station. Now if we continue on through here, there's a few things we have to note about this area. This is the brand new area. They added this in update 1.7 or 12.7. I mean, we are currently on 12.8. So it was a very recent update um, 
to the customs map. Before we get on to the next set of callouts, something you have to keep in mind. This here, that, and that, obviously you can see crosshairs with arrows pointing this way. That is a warning, and that is bait. If you continue on past this point too far, you will get killed by uh, basically unavoidable scavs. Uh, they will snipe you and they will kill you. It, it's just basically protection of moving on too far out of the zone. Uh, but you can utilize that. You can use that to your advantage. If you're getting hit, if you're running into an area where you don't think you can survive, you're out of meds and you don't want to lose your stuff and you have it all insured, you can run out here and let them kill you. That will be too far out for anybody to loot your body. Otherwise, they'll die themselves. So you will get your stuff back in insurance. Now, continuing on down here, this building is called Alamo. That is a spawn location for the scav boss on this map named Rishala and his minions. Uh, he can spawn with, I do believe, four or five raiders. Now, ZB-013, which is where we turn the power on at, is down here. You go below Alamo and this door right here. You have to have a factory key for it, which factory keys are very common if you check all of your check all of your uh, jackets which I can't stress enough, check all of your jackets. Keys are very expensive. They are great profit. But you open this up with a factory key, go in here, stand in the corner, and you will extract. You can get down the way we came down, or you can come up this way, which is right through the back. And you can also go upstairs in this location. Now, instead of going down where we did, which we came around that tron, tron, that train, went downstairs, or you can come upstairs here, clear this out, and then head down to get to the extract. We're going to go ahead and go around here, stay in Alamo. We're going to go upstairs, give you a little bit of oversight as to where we were at. All right, now then, to keep our bearings straight, you come upstairs, this is Alamo. That's the area that we came into Alamo from. That is old gas over here. And this building right here is warehouse four and power just to keep your uh, bearing straight. Now, on top of this building over here, I forgot to mention it. That one right there, there is a sniper scab that spawns. If you go into streamer room that we talked about uh, at the very beginning, if you look in the windows, that sniper scab can't see you. So always go up there and pop him before you start looting. Otherwise, you're, you're going to get a surprise uh, sniper shot. And up on top of this one. From here, it'd be the left one, uh, which is the taller one, I do believe. There is also a sniper scav. He has a more powerful rifle. If he hits you, he'll probably one-shot you, and he doesn't miss too often. So you want to either pop him or use him for intelligence. We'll get over using scavs for intel in a different video, but right now, just take note that one does spawn there. And on this building over here, another sniper scav spawns. Sometimes he'll be on this raised part. Sometimes he'll be on this lower platform. I've never seen him on that lower platform. But he does walk back and forth between this side and that side, shooting towards other elbow and uh, over here towards Alamo. Now, this building complex here, all the way through to the uh, tankers and all the way through to this side construction building over here that you can see, all of that is considered construction. So if somebody says there's fighting in construction, that's that area right there before you cross this threshold into the Alamo area. You'll also have to listen to gunshots to see exactly where in construction there's fighting. All right, now continue on. Now, this building over here is called Intel or Intelligence. I'll show you why here in just a second. Let's get in there really quick. Now this is probably one of the most heavily fought after areas in this map because there is a folder with intelligence spawn in this room right here. 
there's intelligence on this full on this shelf sometimes there can be intelligence here there can be intelligence on the floor and there can be intelligence on the floor over here intelligence at this point the wipe sold for about 165,000 rubles and there's other uses for it so it's worth hunting so that's why people run here really quickly uh something else to note this uh this building has oversight into alamo if you have any op range on your optics you can see all the way through you can see upstairs so that makes being in alamo very dangerous unless you've cleared this building first because you can be shot through here and it's very hard to see into this building from anywhere else so it's hard to see if anybody's up here unless you come here yourself if we continue on Now I said there's an elbow on this side of the map as well, and that is right here. This area right here, here and around, is elbow. If somebody says elbow and you're on this side of the map, this is where they're gonna be talking about. This leads into construction. Again, this whole thing from that construction area over here is construction. You'll need to get into this truck for a quest later on but we will continue or we'll go into that whenever we hit there on our video series. So we're going to go back through the way we came, which is back through over by Intel. We're going to go back here. Now coming through this hole in the fence, if you're over by Intel and you say they're at the hole in the fence, this is where they mean. This hole goes through to the other side. And there, if you uh, come around from the opposite side to come this direction, you know you're not the first ones through. Always pay attention to this window right here. That window is in the room right, ne right across the hallway from that room I told you you can snipe to Alamo with. You can look out that window and get shots on people coming through the hole in the fence. So if people are trying to sneak and they don't pay attention up here, you can pop them right in the head. No problem. Another thing to keep in mind, right here in this bush, there is a body. That body is always here. Always. If you look at him, you'll see an unknown key. That is a quest item. You only need it for one specific quest. And that unlocks that shack that I told you about earlier on that we need to get that golden uh, pocket watch and put it in that shack. That key goes to that shack. So we have to go there to get that key before we head over to that shack to drop that off. Okay. Now this spot right here is the RUAF checkpoint. I don't think we have that available to us. Oh, we do. RUAF roadblock. This is an extract. Now, Typically, we'd be able to extract here, but it's similar to that ZB-12 where this light will be on if it is an active checkpoint or uh, extract. The light is not on, so we cannot extract from here. But that is RUAF roadblock. If somebody says a call out about the uh, Welcome to Tarkov truck, that is this one. As you can see, Welcome to Tarkov. There's also this tank right here, which is the only tank in the game, so if anybody mentions a tank... That's obviously where they're talking about. Now, before we cross over to the other side, we're going to finish our loop here on this side. And go with a few more call outs. So we're going to continue on over here. Now, this is another way to get into construction really quick. You can go in this hole. I want to say there's three holes in the fence right here to get into construction without using the elbow. The elbow is kind of hard to, it's a very bad place to go because it's easy to get tunneled in. So people typically go in this way. So there's that hole in the fence. There's this hole in the fence. And then there's one more hole in the fence right here. Now, early on in the raid, construction is also a very, very good place to go to get your scav kills if you need to do those for tasks. Um, but typically they get cleared out pretty quickly and I don't think they respawn. Player scav spawn there, but that's much later in the raid. Now this shack right here is called the Ice Cream Hut. I don't know why it's called the Ice Cream Hut particularly, but it's just what people call it as, is the Ice Cream Hut. All right, let's continue on. We're going to go across the road here. Now, this is the one that, that has kind of a funny call out, but I'll tell you why. 
these two two hills here, which is this this little here, hill here and this hill right here. That is called the butt cheeks. Like here's the left butt cheek. Here's the right butt cheek. If you're heading out of dorms, it's right and left. So if somebody, if you guys are raiding dorms with a bunch of your friends and they say, hey, we're heading to butt cheeks, just know they're headed that way. Now, speaking of dorms, these are the dorms. These are probably the most heavily fought over areas of the game. Well, at least of this map, maybe not the game, but the map. There's two story dorm, which as you can see, has two stories. And there's three story dorms, which as you can see, has three. We will be using these dorms very heavily throughout these first 10 levels because there are quite a few tasks that require us to come drop things off, pick things up, uh, just find things randomly in the dorms. So we will become very accustomed to these in this series. Another thing to note about the dorms is this is one of the spawns for Rishala and uh, his raiders. So keep that in mind for whenever you get beyond the level 10 point and you hit the point where you are required to kill each of the scav bosses. That might be one of his spawns. Now this area right here that's uh, surrounded by this green fence is the bus depot. And you can see why there's buses here. This is a spot that scavs spawn frequently. Um, multiple times throughout the rage, you'll get scav spawns here. Another good place to go if you're looking for scav kills. But keep in mind, it being right next to dorms, it tends to be a pretty heavily travel area. So you're going to run into PMCs here. So if you want to avoid that, try to avoid this area. Now, if we're keeping our bearings, that one right here, this tall one, is where that sniper scav is that I, that I told you about. And that is construction, so we've basically horseshoot around. We're on the same side of that fence as we were whenever we spawned. This area here is called Train Bridge. If somebody says they're on the Train Bridge, ooh, I think I can make that, yep. Always look up here for a little, little tiny head popping up over this, because that's probably all you'll see. But you can get oversight into the new gas station, which we'll hit here soon all the way down this road and all the way down this road. So it's a very good spot for people to be sniping if they're trying to complete a shooter born in heaven, which is a quest that you'll see later, but we won't do it in level one to 10. Um, but it's one of the hardest levels, like hardest tasks to complete uh, for various reasons. But it's also very dangerous to sit there because all you can see is the person's head. So if you hit them, they're going to die because you're going to shoot them in the head. Unless they have a, a really beefy helmet. Now this, I guess I should mention this, this is a factory checkpoint. The only way to get from that side of the fence to this side of the fence is to go through one hole in the wall over here, or the three into construction, or there's two holes in the wall later, like further on down there. Now if you are in this area and you want to get across, there's a spot you can jump over if your athletics high enough or your strength is high enough, or you can come through here. There's a door on this side and then uh, we can't see it, I don't think, but there's a door on the other side. Each one takes a charge of your factory key. Now, if you notice, your factory key has 50 charges that lasts longer than you would think. But still, that takes two charges, one for that door and the one for the interior door. That is a shortcut through. You can always go there and look to see if it's unlocked, like if you're running by. I always, even if I'm not going to use it, I always go by to see if it still says unlocked or says open. Because if somebody has unlocked it, you do not need to unlock it again, even if they shut the door. So that will tell you if people have been through here. Now this is new gas. We saw old gas on the other side, which is old and run down and decrepit. This is new gas. Um, there's a little bit of loot in here. This is also a spawn point for scavs. So if you need to kill scavs, uh, this is the place a good place to go but scav boss also spawns here so that's something to keep in mind if you have to kill rishala him and his raiders do spawn here now we're going to go down here and head out we're going to go back up the uh railroad to get back around we're heading back towards the place that we spawned we're making that horseshoe back there I'm 
Okay, now these rocks. Always pay attention to these rocks. If you're in new gas, look up here before you really push in. If you're over here in this area, which we'll get to this this uh, radio tower here in a few minutes, um, look down here before you push down. Because people like to sit here, they like to sit down here on this one, down here on this one, and lay down and try to look into new gas or over into this area to get their shooter born in heaven. Shooter born in heaven, as I mentioned earlier, is one of the harder tasks to complete. You have to kill three PMCs on four different maps with a headshot from over 100 meters. So that is very difficult to do. That is 12 different kills you have to get on throughout four different maps. So they always pick places where you have really long sight lines and you're only approachable for a couple of different directions. Like if you lay down here, people aren't going to be able to see you from over here. They might from over here, but you have tree cover. Um, up there, you're not going to be approachable from the left or from the right if you're facing this way, from the left if you're facing that way. So people sit up there. So always check that rock. We call that sniper rock for, you know, obvious reasons. Now this area we call radio tower. I don't know why it's not a radio tower. It's a power tower, but we call it radio tower. Um, there's not any quest items up here that I that I know of that I can remember anyways, but there are some decent loots. Um, there's an M4 spawn over on this thing every once in a while. So people will hoard to that area um there is a player spawn back here back along that fence line there's also a player spawn down here along this fence line or this rock line now something else that you need to know people will get on these rocks and try to shoot over there to get their shooter born in heaven and over here is where we spawn so if you spawn on that side if you spawn where we did this last time make sure you run don't stay there because people will be there in just a second looking down there towards spawn they will try to pick you off and they will try to kill you there's not really any mercy in this game so just keep that in mind now we're going to cut out. I'm going to resume whenever we get to the other side of the map because that's all we have to show you on here. We made it all the way back to our spawn, but there is a whole other side of the map we have to go over. So I'm going to cut it out here and I will resume whenever we get over there. Okay, I said we were going to come back whenever we got to the other side of the map, but I forgot to show you one extract point over here by dorms. So I cut it back whenever we got to dorms. So if we continue on down this back road or back wall, which is the opposite side of the dorms that we saw earlier. There is sometimes a vehicle parked here along this little back parking lot. That is the dorms vehicle extract, which, as you can see, is X fill zero two. If that vehicle is here, that means that X X fill that extract is open. But to use it, it costs seven thousand rubles. So make sure you have those rubles on you or make sure you've looted dorms enough to the point where you have found 7,000 loose rubles that you can use that to head back there. That takes a minute. You go back there, you pay the fee and then you sit and wait for a minute, which you can run away. You can hide in a bush, whatever. As long as you were back there before that minute's up, you can extract that way. Now coming back this way, I'll just show you a different perspective of it. This here is butt cheeks, as I told you about earlier, just coming from a different direction. If that gets your perspective uh, right there. So we're going to continue down this way. All right. Now we're almost the other side of the map. If we want to keep get our bearings straight, this is the ice cream hut that I told you about just a few minutes ago. And that's construction. And our UAF roadblock is if you continue to follow that road around, go through there, our UAF roadblock is at the end of that road. If we just keep that in mind to keep our bearings straight here. Now, another extract is called Smuggler's Boat. That is in the back corner here 
from the other side of the road. It is right here. If that extract is open, there will be a campfire here and you'll be able to see the smoke and there's going to be a little boat, like a little rowboat right there. If that's uh, if that campfire is lit and there's smoke going up and that boat's there, that camp, uh, extract is open. As you can see, that is one of our extracts, uh, but we can't use it. Continuing on this way. There are four different bridges to get across from one side to the other. This here is junk bridge. As you can see why, it's made by a bunch of junk. That is big bridge. You can imagine why. It's a big bridge. Now if we go on top of big bridge, you'll be able to see the other two. Okay. Jump. All right, this is land bridge, and that's also land bridge. Okay, so it's kind of hard to tell which one's which because most people don't differentiate between them. They just say, I'm on land bridge, and based on where you were at, your teammates will know where you were. But like if you're here and you say they're on land bridge, you might say they're on the far land bridge, or they're right down here on land bridge, which would be right here. So it's kind of hard to differentiate, but two different land bridges because they're both bridges, you know, made solely out of land. And that's junk bridge because it's a bridge made out of junk. All right, we're going to go on this way. Go back around to where we would have came up had we crossed the junk bridge because junk bridge is right down there. I'm glad the weather cleared up because it's going to make it easier to see this. This building right here, this big one, as you can see, it's red. People have so cleverly came up with the name for this of Big Red. Now, that's a building we are going to become very familiar with because I think there's three, maybe four different tasks pre-level 10 that require you to go into Big Red to get an objective item and leave. So we will be very familiar with this whole complex right here. At the end of this road is the crossroads extract. That is one of our extracts. We could go there right now, but I have a few more things to show you. Nope, didn't mean to tilt. Okay. Go through here. This is the blue med hut. The reason it's called the med hut is because there is a medical box here. Something else to keep in mind. Always look for these key cabinets. Because you can find keys, obviously, on the key cabinets. So again, there's there's Big Red. There is an alley behind Big Red that you can walk. So if you're in Big Red and you hear somebody walking on grass, just know that they're in this alley back here or on the other side of the fence. Once your skills get, to, get a little bit higher in perception, um, you'll be able to differentiate easier if there is that wall that's separating there. Um, so you'll know if they're right outside or if they are on the other side of this fence. This is called ditch. This ditch goes all the way from this road all the way through to the other side. Um, so if somebody says they're in ditch, they are. This is the only only ditch call out, I think, in the game, especially on this map. So if they're in ditch, this is where they're at. Uh, that doesn't necessarily say that they are on one side or the other, but that is ditch. This is trailer park. Or this, this sorry, this is storage. Trailer park is on the other side of this. This is storage. Obvious to see why, you know, this is a bunch of storage units. Problem is there's not really much call, like much difference in call outs while you're in storage. Storage is storage. So if you say they're in storage, be ready to be like, they're on the far side, they're on the near side. Um, just, you might have to come up with your own call outs, but this whole area is storage. Now, if you're in here and you hear metal, always look up because you can get on this roof, you can get on these roofs, and you can get on the far roofs. So you can get on the roofs of these buildings. If you hear a bunch of metal, look up because it's easy to be running in here clang 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 
and you'd be like, they must be in one of these storage cabinets or uh, containers, but they might not be. They might be on the roof and you might just get easily popped because you're not paying attention up. So this is a dangerous spot to be. I would advise against it. This is also a cheeky spot to be in because you can hide out here and see all the way down there or you can hide out here and look down here and then just duck back in. Now, if we move on out of the trailer park or into the trailer park out of storage, I'll get that straight one of these days. This whole area is the trailer park. Trailers, 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 trailer park. And there is a trailer park extract that is in this grassy area over here. That is also a player spawn. So people who spawn over here are going to have to extract on the side of the map that we spawned on. People who spawned on the side of the map we spawned on will have to extract over here. Trailer park and crossroads are always open. The other ones are not always open. Uh, like the RUAF roadblock and smuggler's boat, they are not always open, but always worth checking out. Now if we move on this way, we're going to get another look at um, the land bridges. We will also have to come to this shack for a quest. We have to get a golden plate of Zibbo lighter out of the dorms, which I said we'd be going to dorms for a bunch of tasks. You got to get that and drop it off here. Oh, get up there. Oh my god. All right. That's aggravating. Okay. Now I could have done that easier and gone through that hole in the wall, a hole in the fence, but then I would have had to go around. Um this is also a player spawn. And down here is a player spawn. So if you spawn on the other side, or back there, I said there was a player spawn at, at Crossroads. There's also a player spawn at Trailer Park. Basically, all four corners of this island, there is a player spawn. Um, so this is a very hotly contested area because there's four different spawns. PvP happens here a lot very early on in the raid. This, for some reason, has a call out all its own, this little area right here, this this object, that's called Rocket Chair. I am assuming if you're getting into Tarkov, you've probably watched videos from a streamer and content creator named Pestily. He's awesome. He's how I know everything I do know about this game. Easily the person I credit most for, the, for my knowledge. Um, but he dubbed this the Rocket Chair because it's a chair and it looks like it has rockets on it. Makes sense. So anytime somebody says rocket chair, they got it from him. And that's what they're referring to is rocket chair. Now, one more thing to note. If you spawn on this side of the map, this turned over train car, which we call turned over train car or rat spot. If you hear somebody refer to rat spot, this is where they mean. You can sit here. And see all the way across land bridge. This is the far land bridge I was telling you about. The other land bridge is over here. You can't see it. Uh, but it's over there. And this is another spot where people will get their shooter born in heaven headshots. Because you can see all the way across there. And once they get to, I want to say, like right here, that area, that is 100 meters. If you can pop somebody in the head there, that's a 100 meter headshot for you. No problem. So, this is not as heavily utilized as it used to be because now whenever people are running the first thing they'll do is they they like say they run from this direction they'll go in here is there somebody there they'll shoot them if there's somebody coming from this direction they'll pop in there and shoot them uh so it's a dangerous spot to sit in but something to keep in mind if you spawn over here always check this rat spot to make sure nobody's there before you run across otherwise you're just asking to get killed All right, now I'm thinking that might be it. I can't think of any other call outs to give you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and run to our extract, which is right down here. 
I will show you one more thing. So this is Big Red from the other side. You can get in several different directions. You can get in from there. You can get in from the door that we walked in through the Blue Medical Hut. You can get in here. You can get in through this hole in the fence right here. And along the same wall on down there, which I don't know if we can see it from here. Well, you can see the rubble from it having fallen down. There's another hole in the fence. You can get into Big Red from there, too. So there's a lot of ways into Big Red and a lot of ways out. But that's just a lot of areas to get shot from. So if you're in Big Red, get in, get out. Unless you're looking for PvP, then go there specifically for that reason. All right, so we're going to run on out of here and head towards Extract. So I can show you exactly where those are at. Hold on, there's a... We'll go to, we'll go to Crossroads, this one's easier. All right. Now this is Crossroads. I really hope this video helps you guys with the Tarkov 1 through 10, but I tried to make it in a way that help you learn customs even if you have no intentions of watching the series. Now, in addition to everything I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I also want to invite you all to join our Discord community. The link's going to be down below. Just go ahead and hop in there, join the community. It's a great place to go if you're looking to hop in and play some Tarkov. There's nearly always some people ready to jump into some raids with people they've never met, help other people learn the game, maybe learn a little bit themselves. Just go ahead and hop in there, hit that green check mark on the Welcome Here screen. That'll open up access to everything. And with all that being said, hope to see you guys in the next video.